Welcome to the North Pentecostal Church live stream, a place to be family. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it's, it's officially Advent season. It just doesn't feel like it. However, if you were here yesterday helping out at the church outside, you probably appreciated the 11 degree weather and not minus 11 in snow. So we thank you for those who volunteered to help out at Journey in a little while. Later on this morning, Bev's going to come and talk about Journey a little bit more. But uh, we just want to take a moment and welcome you here. For those of you who are visiting, my name is Larry. I'm the lead pastor. This is Jack. He is the youth pastor. <laughs> You're the coach. Yeah. If you're visiting or you've been here for a while and has, haven't filled out a visitor's card, we encourage you. It's just so that we can touch base with you throughout the week. Um, we don't have uh, any uh, spam or we just want to say hi. Uh, so if you haven't filled out a visitor's card and you want to get more connected, please do that. That's right. We also, if you're visiting, uh, we have a nice little gift. It is one of these mugs and it does come with a gift card for Tim Hortons. I apologize if you're not a Tim Hortons fan, but that's what we give out. Um, if you've been here a long time and you'd like to buy one, or maybe you just say, like, I'd really like one and I've been here forever, we do have extras. You just got to let us know. But if you've not received one and you're kind of new to us, just let us know. We've got a, a stack that we can hand out. In way of announcements, we want to let you know um, just a couple of things. The first one is important for those who join the first Monday night of the month for the knitting with purpose, knitting, crocheting, sitting around talking for hours. Uh, it is Christmas sweater night. It's not tomorrow because I thought it was December already. No, it's next week. Next week sorry. But we're letting you know now because it's going to get busier and busier as we go. But when you prepare for that uh, next Monday, it is Christmas sweater night. So it gives you an extra week to go out and buy a Christmas sweater, whatever that looks like, Hide, or make one. You can crochet yourself a Christmas sweater with the Grinch on it. It's just a good opportunity to have some fun. Um, but two things that we want to let you know in advance um, for the day. Jack's going to talk about Christmas dinner. Yeah, let's do that. So Christmas dinner coming up. This is your last day to buy a ticket for the Christmas dinner. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be a time where we can get back to one of our uh, long-lasting traditions here at MPC. Um, if you haven't been to one, it's a sight to see. So uh, please buy a ticket. It's going to be fun. Yeah. It's good. We've got trivia set up. We've got music set up. It's going to be a fun night. Uh, the other one is the Christmas Carol Sing is coming on the 11th. Uh, it is not registration needed. It is not to call and let anyone know. It's just to show up. It's at the United Church in Norwood, just across from the food land. So if you are looking for something to do the night of December 11th, that will be your opportunity to jump in and enjoy the carol sing, the reading of the gospel, uh, the nativity and all of that to highlight the coming of Jesus to the earth. That's it for our announcements. We're going to turn it over to the team. Uh, in just a little while, we're going to come up again and dismiss the children off to uh, their ministries, nursery, super church, and preschool. They'll be heading out the back. Uh, discipleship runs today as well for junior highs? Yeah, junior and senior high, yeah. And they'll go out this door when that time comes. So if we can uh, just take a moment and stand together as we prepare to go into worship. Join me as we pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity to be in your house today, to come together and to lift our hearts in your name, Jesus. As we present ourselves to you, we invite you to come into this room and have your way with us, that in this setting, we would be all about you, your agenda, your heart, and we would meet with you today. And so, Father, we bless you today. Come and move in this room in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. It is an honor to be here to worship him with, with you, our church family. Just um, quickly, we're just free to worship. Our altars are always open and just worship him. Uh, and it's all about him this morning. Glory. 
is who that is who you are he never leaves us that is who you are he never forsakes us that is who you are that is who you are even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working never stop you never, you never stop. stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in When I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning
never be alone. There's another in the fire standing next to me. There's another in the waters holding back the seas. Should I ever need reminding my power sets me free? There is a grace that holds
King of kings, 
Father, we thank you for the word given through an obedient servant to declare that the breath in our lungs is both to live and to worship you. This is a double blessing, Lord, because to live is to gain with you and to worship is to experience you. So, Father, we respond in that, that when we breathe, it will be in worship that we won't take for granted the time we have, we won't set aside moments and say, that's okay, it's just gonna happen and I'll just live through it, but that we will intentionally come before you and seek your face, that we will pursue you with all that we have, that our worship will be solely for you. Thank you for the promise that when we come, healing will come, that freedom will come, that deliverance will come. God, that you will surround your people as they come and they ask. All you asked of us is that we would bring it to you. So Father, we glorify your name. We lift you up. You are holy forever. And one day we will stand face to face with you, Jesus. And declare those words, you are holy. This is our preparation. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. Father, I pray as we go into the word, that you would be blessed by what is shared, that your heart would be echoed through my lips. Let your name be lifted high. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. May be seated. It is a wonderful thing when the Bible comes to life as we gather. And that is scriptural evidence that God would take a time with his servants and come and visit through word. And so we are always excited when God moves in that moment. I'm going to invite the children to stand and make their way out the back. Bev's going to come at this time and share. Um, They're already going. Junior highs and those who are going to discipleship can either go at the back or out this door and make your way over to the youth room there where you will learn more about serving. It's always good to see more and more of our congregation get up and go to their programs and their ministries. I, uh, I look forward to the day when half of you are children and you stand up to go out. Or just more and more volunteers too. I would not reject that at all. I'm going to let Bev talk about volunteers. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see everyone. Doesn't it look beautiful up here? It looks so good. Pastor Larry and Heidi did an amazing job yesterday. I'm so proud of them. It looks so good. Yeah, it, unless you've decorated a church before, you have no idea how long it takes. Just, right, Becky? Like, I can hear her laughing. We're like, yeah, yeah, it takes a long time. So thank you very much. It's been awesome. Uh, we have Journey to Bethlehem coming up. It's uh, J- December 17th and 18th. And we have a different way of registering this year. You can either register online, and we have some positions there that you can sign up to come, or you can just drop in. So that's a little bit of a hybrid model. I'm sure you've heard that word a little bit since COVID. Um, But what I would like to ask you is, if you aren't bringing someone 
that really needs to hear the word that you kind of wait off on the signing up part and let people who are coming in from the community sign up then. That would be great. I mean, I'm not going to judge and sit there and go, oh, they are, you know, whatever. Um, but if you could wait, that would be great. But if you have a neighbor or someone that you're talking to that would need, would like to sign up to come at a certain time, you know, if you have four kids, it's really hard to keep them in snowsuits for an hour, right, while you wait to go outside. So you could sign up for, say, 7 o'clock and then go right out at 7 o'clock. It's kind of like, um, Jackie and I were saying this, the Canada Wonderland speed pass, you know? Like, you just got to cut the line at 7 and go in. Um, but we also want to make it available for those who are literally just, you know what, we need to go as a family tonight and go to Bethlehem, right? Uh, so I do need some volunteers, as per usual. Usually it takes us about 80 the night of, and all together I feel like it's about 100 volunteers doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And my favorite part of this uh, volunteer position is that I get to see you all kind of shine in little bits here and there, right? So, you know, Craig talks me off the ledge at different places, and we have uh, Mike Pierce came on his day off and put up a building with his truck, and I stood there and cheered him on, you know, those kinds of things. And then we have Neil and Scott spent the whole day, and there's uh, Josiah there, and Craig, and a bunch of you, anyway, set it up and set the building up. It takes a lot of people. And then inside, Edna's doing costumes, and Nicole's texting me at 11 o'clock at night to do the sign-up for the website. You know, all those things. Everyone kind of just does a little bit of their part. So it might look like you want to sign up for a dozen cookies. I will take it. That would be great. If you would like to come out for a couple nights, awesome. We would love to have you be part of it. Uh, if you want to be inside, we've got people in here, people outside. Just let's be honest, there's something for everyone. That's my favorite part of the journey, right? So if there's something that you could help out with, let me know. I try not to put people in positions that they hate, so uh, I always let God kind of take care of those things and hope he'll bring someone else along. Uh, we do need Mary and Joseph, which is kind of a highlight. So if anyone wants to be the Mary and Joseph, <laughs> that's kind of essential. But, you know, Pete and I could do it in a pinch, maybe. I don't know. Just, just kidding, honey. It's okay. Um, all right, so... Uh, characters, if you have a costume hidden in your trunk of your car from last year, if you want to just like slip it on the shelf, I will not notice. It'll be great because we are down a few costumes. Uh, we will get you to come and try some costumes on. If you're going to be for both nights, Saturday and Sunday, then uh, take your costume. If you're only coming for one night, we're going to leave it here so that we can share them. Makes sense, right? And yeah, so I think that's about it. I will have the sign-up sheets at the back, but I just want to let you know, it was kind of fun. We were kind of a little um, lamenting a little bit how much what there was to do yesterday, and uh, I'm not sure if it was Neil or Scott, but they said, well, if one person gets saved, it'll be worth it, and I was like, true enough. Craig and I had just said that it's worth it because I want to tell you something. When God's word is spoken aloud, it changes lives. It's changed my life. It's changed... I, can, I could tell you stories for everybody here. It changes a life. And so that's why we do Bethlehem. It's not because we want to put on a show. It's not because we want to convert anyone. We just want to share the hope of Jesus. And Wednesday nights, I've been doing a shadow drama. <laughs> and a uh, little chuckle there because it's crazy. Um, so I'm looking at my little people there in front of me, and I'm like, hmm, will this come together really? And uh, we talked a little bit about the Christmas story. I'm not sure if you're aware, but our children don't always hear the Christmas story out of the church. It's not something, not everyone knows all the pieces to it, and so it's really important. Our children need to know that there is the hope of Jesus, and so I would be blessed to have you come alongside and help us to share with our community this, uh, this busy season. I totally get it, feeling it. Um, but we would just love to have you partner with us. So if you could help out, I'm at the back. For those interested in the Mary and Joseph part, there is a history to it. For those who are new and you don't know the history, if you're dating and you want to get married, sign up to be Mary and Joseph. If you're married and looking to have a child, sign up to be Mary and Joseph. I don't know what it is, but it's almost every year that one of those two things happen after people play Mary and Joseph. Sometimes they get engaged at Journey. So you just don't know. Uh, I forgot to mention when we talked about the dinner, 
If you have food sensitivities, please let the office know in the next couple of days, either Monday or Tuesday, so we can let um, our caterer know what those are, just to have preparation for that. Um, the last thing, uh, because last week was a weather phenomenon for a lot of people, um, we did announce last week, and uh, I'm going to give it a couple more days to walk through this. Um, Anna's taken a little bit of time off. We are so thankful for all that she has done in the life of this church. But as childcare becomes harder and harder to gather, um, she just needs that time to make sure that she can get the right uh, person and the right fit and everything as we go forward. So if you are available for uh, and gifted at the administrative position, we have a job description available and you are interested in it, please let us know. Get your name in. We're going to close that um, by Tuesday. So you have a couple of days to let us know you're interested. And then after that, we'll start making phone calls for interviews and get things going. There might be a week or so in between, because Anna's done on December 1st. Um, there might be a week or so in between where we don't have anyone. So bear with me, because that is not a strong suit. Um, so you might miss some emails. You might miss posts, but that's okay. We're going to push through, and we're going to believe for a good season ahead. But if you're interested, let us know in the next couple of days. Let's get going. Let's, let's get into the message. Um, we're going to start with a bit of a game. We, uh, we're starting a series called Preparing for the King. But we're going to start with a game, and I want you to daydream with me a little bit. And I know for some of you, daydreaming in church is dangerous. I know that, um, listen, there was a time in my life where I worked 12-hour shifts, and I would go to church on Sundays, and I would just do the constant I think I heard what he said. And I know that when I tell you daydream, you might turn into a head nodding moment. So I'm going to trust the person sitting with you, whether it be a spouse or a friend or somebody you don't know, that if you stop daydreaming and start snoring, they'll sharpen their elbow and wake you up. You can practice right now if you want to. So I want you to daydream. Um, I want you to see yourself right now sitting at home. I want you to see it as though you've just come back from a trip somewhere. Maybe you've gone off to somewhere warm and sunny. And off in the corner are your bags. You've left your luggage kind of packed. And, you know, you've had a meal, but it's still dishes on the counter. Maybe you've just come back from two weeks off hunting. You've been in the bush, and your dirty boots and your winter clothes are just piled up in the corner. You don't know what to do. Sitting at the door is your gun and bow or whatever you have. Or maybe it's just been a long week of sickness. And you look around, you're like, well, the dishes aren't done. They're piled up on top of the dishwasher. I just haven't had the energy to do it. And you know that in the washroom is all of the clothes from all of the showers because it's like I just don't have the time to wash them. And you know your house is not ready for anyone. And then your phone rings or you get a text. Hey, I'm in the area. I'm stopping by in 10 minutes. How do you feel in that exact moment? Again, in this sense of daydreaming, how are you feeling? What are you doing? Are you, suddenly you read this or you hear those words and all you think is those unwashed clothes, that pile of dishes, the leftovers from three days ago that are still sitting on the stove. And you think like, I, I can't soak that. I can't scrub that out in 10 minutes. Do you rush off and make sure that the toilet's clean and there's no toothpaste in the sink? Because what if they need the bathroom while they're there? Do you rush to make coffee or cold drinks? Do you put some appetizers out so they have something to eat when they show up? Or do you simply respond, hey, can you give me an hour? I'm just not ready for you. I just got back or I've, just, I've been unwell. Or do you write back and say, not a chance. I'm sorry, it's just been bad. Or maybe the most likely response is nothing. You don't even answer the phone. You don't even read that text. You just leave it because an unresponded contact means I'm not available. Or is there a chance that you write back and maybe you tell a little lie to say, I just am not available. I'm not home. I'm off. I'm still away, whatever that looks like. Because you know in your mind, my house is not ready for people. What does that look like? What's it look like when your parents or your in-laws get in touch with you? 
coming by tomorrow, do you start to stress? Do you start to worry about what it looks like? Most of us would differ in what we would do. Some would say, come over and jump up and tidy a few things. Some wouldn't care. Some think your house is just ready all the time, and that's great. Some of you would extend and say, it's just, it's not going to work. I'm really sorry. The options are numerous, but the point is, for some, the text or the call is a moment of incredible stress. Someone is coming, and I'm just not prepared for it. So in this series, Preparing for the King, this whole moment of daydreaming was a moment of self-discovery. Hopefully, it'll help you to set the tone for the rest of the morning. And as we progress today, I want you to be able to know that you are prepared and not needing to get prepared. Because there's a big difference between being ready and rushing to get prepared. Also, I want you to know what it's like to be prepared for the king. So we're going to begin today in Luke 2. At the point in the text we're going to read, Jesus has been born. His parents are right now in this moment in Luke going about the business of making sure the law is being followed. They are good Jewish people who understand there are rituals we need to cover with this child and we need to consecrate him according to the law. And so they're on their way to the temple. And we're going to be picking up this morning verse 25. Here's what it says. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took his arms and, raised, and, and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, now you may now dismiss your servants in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. A couple of considerations from this passage, and I'm always amazed at the story of Simeon. This is why I'm amazed. He is one of the people in Scripture that hovers Old Testament, New Testament. John the Baptist is considered the last Old Testament prophet. Simeon is an Old Testament individual. And something to consider in that is in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was rarely on people often or for long periods of time. You will read through scripture and it talks about kings and prophets and individuals who have specific work. But ones who built the original temple, Solomon and David are involved in, the spirit came on some of them to do specific work and then the spirit left. On Simeon, there's no recording of how long the spirit was on him, just that the spirit was on him and he received a promise by the Holy Spirit, you will not die until you see the Messiah. So there is an incredible word of knowledge that comes to this man who is religious, who's, who's, who's righteous and devout. He is set to follow the custom of the law that's been given to him and do it in a knowledge of faith. Not just do it because, hey, we have to follow the law, but do it to honor God. And so he's following the law and he's going about his ways and the spirit comes upon him and says, you will not die until the consolation of Israel comes. And I'm amazed at this because he hovers the Old and the New Testament and he makes that bridge in between the two and we never see the Spirit leave him. What we do see is the Spirit speak to him and usher him into the temple courts. I have to think at that moment, Simeon has no idea why he's going to the temple. He just feels in his spirit, this is what I have to do. I need to go to the temple. I need to see why my spirit is lighting up right now that that's where I have to be. And he walks in and immediately he sees the family, Mary, Joseph, baby Jesus. Jesus at this time is about 40 days old. 
and he knows instantly this boy child is my king. This is the Messiah. This is the one come to redeem the earth. And he breaks down in worship, praises the name of God, lifts him up in that moment. What I understand about Simeon is that he waited for a season. We don't know how long the promise was from you're not going to die until to the moment where he receives that knowledge, that sight of Jesus. He says, you may now dismiss your servant. We don't know if it was weeks, months, years that the Spirit rested upon him, preparing him for the king. We just know that the Spirit was there and eventually he was moved to go into the courts. Simeon spent at least a portion of his life preparing for the king. Again, unknown how long, but we know he is righteous. We know he's devout. So he's not just simply existing on earth. He's serving God. He's preparing for the one that's promised. He did not take it lightly that he would meet the Messiah before his death. And I would suggest to you today that Simeon spent his days preparing his spirit and heart for this moment that we read in Scripture. One of my favorite things about Simeon is this is all we know of him. We know nothing else. You can scour books about the New Testament and not find much else. We don't know how old he was. I'm guessing he was pretty old if he's saying you may now dismiss your servant. But he could have been in his 50s or 60s. He could have been 100. We don't know. <clears throat> we simply know that he is a servant of God and that he is preparing his life for the king that is to come. Simeon was not concerned with doing anything at this moment. He simply wanted to meet this king. I want you to go back to daydreaming for a moment. What, what state is your house in right now? In this moment of back and forth of daydreaming and reality, what state is your life in, your house in right now? Is it messy or is it clean? Where, where's your house? Would you consider it to be messy? The question is subjective because messy for you might be immaculate for somebody else. They might walk in, you say, hey, just please disregard the mess. And somebody walks in and goes, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like they look at their house and say, it's lived in. It's okay, people can come in the house. And then you say, don't mind the mess. And they walk in and go, this is... This is the cleanest place I've ever seen. I go and visit people and they say, please don't mind the mess. And I walk in and I'm like, I've stayed at messier hotels that are paid to clean and make it really nice. And it's like, what, where's the mess? Like, there is a dish on the counter that had a piece of cheese on it maybe at one point. That's the mess? Like, man, I'm shamed that that's a mess. <coughs> I want you to think about it for yourself. Is your house right now, if you were to go home, would you walk in and say, this place is a mess? So often we evaluate our preparedness for company on the state of, our, of the mess of our house. And it can get stressful. Does company expect drinks to be ready? Do they want coffee? Do they want snacks? Do they need something set before them? Should I make an entire meal? Should there be something available for them in case they ask? Should we have... What if, what if, hold on, what if it storms and they get stayed over? Where's my guest room? That's where I threw all the dirty laundry so they wouldn't see it. <laughs> all the unfolded blankets that are kind of washed, they just didn't dry well, so they kind of smell because they're musty. They're just in the guest room laying on the bed because i got to rewash them. How long will they stay? What if they come over you know how, like, when you were young or maybe you're still that young and you're with your parents and they say, listen, make sure everything's clean. We have company coming over. And, like, your bed is made as if the company's going to come and open your bedroom door and make sure that you made your bed that day. Or they're going to lift up the couch and see what's under it. I'll tell you what. If you come to my house and you lift up my couch, I am not ashamed to tell you that there is a carpet of dog hair. 
because we have an Australian shepherd and all he does is lose hair. I lift that thing up once a week and sweep it and it's not that day yet. <laughs> so if you were to come over and lift up my couch, it's just dog hair underneath. And probably between the cushions, it's dog hair. <coughs> because that's what he does, he sheds. Anyone else, like, you just, yeah, Becky, yeah. Well, you have a German Shepherd, right? Yeah. yeah. You know what it's like. It's just, that's what dogs do. They shed. And they chew things. Our dog just barks incessantly as well until you come over and pet him, and then he's calm. What else do you ask yourself? I hope the mouse traps are empty, or at least out of view. <laughs> hey, Ask yourself this question. If you have company over and you have mousetraps set up, what happens if one goes off while they're there? Cheer. Cheer. Have you ever been awake or around when a mousetrap goes off? Because there's that quick little... But then after, because nerves are still alerting, there's a... As the legs and the body flops. What do you do in that moment when somebody goes, what's that ticking sound? I think it's a mouse. It's dead now. If you're married and you're the wife, is your first thought, did my husband shave today? Did he clean the sink out? Guess what? I didn't clean the sink this morning. I cleaned, not all of it, I cleaned in the sink but I forgot to clean around it because at five to eight and we're like, we got to go. I'm like, okay, well, I'll just rinse it and then I'll do the rest later. So there's stubble around the sink from shaving. So we have those kind of moments. If you're just a guy in general, somebody calls and says, we're coming over and it's not just another guy, is your first thought, did I put the seat down? There's a lot of stuff that goes through our heads when we think about it, the laundry, the dishes. Listen, if you come over right now, I know that my dishwasher has clean dishes in it and dirty dishes on top of it. Actually, often in our house, the dishwasher is empty and the, the dirty dishes are just on it, not in. They're just sitting there waiting for somebody to put them away. And I fight the urge often because I'm like, kids, put your dishes away. And so theirs will sit there while Heidi and I put ours in and sometimes eventually... They'll get put in so they can get washed. But it becomes that moment of what are we doing? Where is your house right now? Question after question arises in our heads because we judge ourselves based on the cleanliness of the house. And we think others will look at our mess and never want to talk to us again. I don't know about you, but we don't live in perpetual clean. We have a lived in house that looks lived in. It's clean enough to have people over Here's my secret. If I want to make it really clean, we keep it lived in enough that in 30 minutes, I can make that place spotless. I can have the floor scrubbed, vacuum, dishes put away, laundry put in a place where it's not accessible, and there's a lot right now because you got to change your sheets every couple of weeks, right? Or whatever that's supposed to be. So there's just a lot of extra laundry. Dishes, all of that stuff is out there. But I know if somebody said, hey, we're going to come over this afternoon, I don't advise it because my boys are sick. Again, in 30 minutes, I can have that place ready for you to come over and feel like it's okay. It's a lived-in place, except for the dog hair under the couch. I'm not cleaning that. Again, it's not Monday. I'll do it tomorrow. But we don't live in this perpetual clean of our house. And the truth is, Things accumulate quickly. So many things can add up and make it seem like we are never ready to have people over. Where's your house? How do you feel? For those of you right now who are saying, anybody can come to my house right now. It is spotless. There is nothing wrong with it. Go buy a black light. Then you'll know, then you'll see that things are hidden. We had, we had people over once, we don't have a blacklight, 
We had people over once and, and we rented a place that had this really thick carpet and our house was clean, we had vacuumed, we had done all that stuff. They came over and then they came over again and they brought slippers with them and we asked the question, why did you bring slippers? I don't like the feeling of stones and dirt when I walk on the carpet. And I was like, what are you talking about? I don't understand. But it's like the thickest carpet, like you had that orange shag carpet here, we had like a white shag carpet and it looked white. But sure enough, if you walked bare feet, you could feel things in the bottom of that carpet. But it was that moment where you go, the house feels clean. And somebody said, no, it's not clean enough because we judge ourselves and that hurts you sometimes. Now, none of this to shame anyone to get you thinking, what if someone does come? What happens? What if they call? What am I going to do? I have to tell them they can't come. It's not to shame you and make you think that. Hey, what if they just show up? What if they don't even call? You're like, what does that feel like in that moment? What if we change the whole conversation from your physical house to your spiritual house? Simeon was prepared. He spent days getting that way so that when the one he expected showed up, he wouldn't have to do anything to be ready. Let's step away from a friend visiting and think about Jesus. And here's the truth for you. The king comes simply as he desires. Our preparation is actually to receive him readily. It's not to suddenly just go out and get busy. The king comes when he wants. Let's consider Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. It says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. Pause for a minute. Martha has made a statement to Jesus, my home is open to you. It wasn't in the instance of them coming through and she sees him and says, why don't you come to my house? It's a knowledge. Martha has her house open for me. I can go there when I want to. Jesus knows he's allowed at Martha's house. So while they are traveling, they come to the village where Martha had opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who had sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said, but Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken from her. In this passage, we have both paradigms at work. We have one who readily received, and another who suddenly got busy. We have one who knows their house is clean, and the other who fears the judgment of Jesus and the disciples. Mary saw the king come through the door and she chose to receive him into her house, her life. And she chose rest at his feet to minister to him and be ministered to by him. No pretenses, no worry about the unfolded laundry, not even concerned in that moment on presenting him a drink. She simply sat before him and she chose what is better, to know the king and to be known by him. Mary didn't need to get things done. Her preparation was complete. The second that she saw Jesus, she was ready. Martha, however, saw the uncooked fish, the need for cold drinks. Perhaps she needed to get a bowl and a cloth so she could wash his feet. She saw the animals that they rode in on, and they need food and water as well. There needs to be a place for them to be tied up. And she suddenly got very busy impressing the guest and missed the important option. When your friends come to visit, they should want to just want to be with you. When your family comes to visit, their desire should be to just want to be there. When Jesus came to Martha's house, he just wanted to be there. If your friends judge you by the layer of dust on the top of your fridge, shame on them. It is not for us to do so. We do not even know the state of a person's life day by day or week by week often. 
Do you know what everyone in this room lived through in the last month? Some of us don't remember what we lived through in the last month. If they truly loved you, it wouldn't bother them. And if it does, have them come over in January, but they have to sit on your porch. And make sure it's snowing in minus 40 the day they visit. Then the assumed mess inside is no longer that troublesome. The point is, when we have a visitor, we need to receive them, not turn into a Martha. Let the dust settle, because understand, in two hours, it's back. We have a friend who has a plaque that says, dust is just a protective covering. It's true, I think. Sit with your friends, sit with your family, and minister to each other. Let Mary be the model for you. We need more like her who are invested in each other, not the work around them. It's going to get done. Here's the secret. Mary's heart was prepared for this moment. She understood the importance of the man before her, and that was her only concern. But for Martha, do you see what the scripture says? She was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She wasn't prepared in her heart for the moment. The king comes when he chooses to. You need to be ready to receive him. And Martha was distracted by preparations. Mary was ready. It's not about the house. It's about the heart. The preparations can wait. You need to receive the king, Martha. You need to let him into your home. You need to sit at his feet. You need to fall face down and you need to worship. If King Jesus walked in right now, would your heart be ready to cry out, you are worthy? Or would you be more concerned about the two burned out lights? How many of you notice them every week? There's one, there's one. It's funny how they're symmetrical. It keeps things in line. Would you be more concerned about those things? Would you be more concerned about the stains on the carpet? We sing songs with our lips, but are our hearts hardened to the person of Jesus? Will we readily receive him if he comes for us? If he was to show up right now, to receive his bride, would we readily receive him and excitedly go? Or would we rush off to say, I'm not ready? Have we prepared ourselves today to meet with Jesus? Have we helped our neighbors to be prepared to meet the king? So the urgent preparations in our mind can wait. We simply need to stop and receive the king. This is our preparation to readily receive him. I'm going to ask the team to come back. This world is full of rush, so much so that we can get swept up in it and we can worry often about if our house is clean enough for people to stop in and visit. The world is full of the idea that we need to impress each other constantly. It's not a new story. Martha got wrapped up in it. Martha saw all the needs that needed to be done, and instead of sitting with Jesus, the king of kings, she went to the kitchen. She worried about the bathrooms. She folded the laundry. She tied up the animals. She wanted to impress. And Mary just went and sat at his feet. Our concern should be that we are preparing for the king in order to receive him, and that is a matter of your heart. I conclude with a very simple thought. In preparing for the king, do not focus on material needs. Look always to his promise and receive him in honor. Can we stand and pray together? Father, as we are in now officially the season of Advent, preparation for the nativity of Jesus, the coming of of the Messiah. We look back historically and know that Isaiah prophesied 700 years before Jesus came, more than 700 years. Israel had seven centuries to prepare for the coming of the king, and yet they weren't ready. I thank you for people like Simeon who were prepared. People like Anna, who we will talk about next week, who sat in the temple prepared for the king. 
Thank you for the model that they represent. Thank you for Mary, who received you readily into her house to be ministered by you, ministered to by you, and to minister to you. Father, help us to never miss a moment where we receive King Jesus, where we worship him, where we put our hearts on the line to say, come and give me more, where we honor you, receive you in your fullness. No expectations, no thought of how are we going to impress, but we just open our hearts and our arms and say, come, Lord Jesus. Father, as we press on towards Christmas, I pray that we will never miss a moment where we can celebrate you. That we will be prepared to meet Jesus. As we worship, Lord, I pray that you will set our hearts in the right place. That we will take this moment to prepare ourselves just as Simeon did, to be righteous and devout, to put ourselves before you and to put others before us and receive each other and especially you in honor and to minister to one another. As we prepare for the King in Advent season, put our hearts in the right place. In Jesus' name.
Father, we bless you in this place. Your great name high above any other. Your presence, what we long for, has shown in this room. Father, as we go, we want to continue to bless you. Help us, Lord, to see your face in all things. That in the proximity of all people, we hold tight to you and you alone. God, that we will respond in kindness to all things, knowing that you are present and you can use that moment to speak your life and truth to others. And so we bless you today, Lord, as we go, that we could also be a blessing to many and begin to see those tides of salvation roll across this county throughout this world. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I think they have another song ready. You don't have to rush. By all means, stick around and talk to one another. But if you have to go, have a wonderful, warm afternoon. We'll see you back. Remember to see Bev about volunteering for Journey to Bethlehem. Have a great day.